on this Sunday morning. On this morning, we will have what we are referring to as our table of blessings, where we will come together uh, as a body of Christ and petition the face of God in prayer. We will have several prayers that we will be going before the Lord with. One is the prayer of there is grace at the table. We will be talking about healing at the table. We will be talking about peace at the table. And then closing with abundance at the table. And I've given you the four topics of our four types of prayers. But I want you to know that at the table of God is everything that we need. When we fall before His presence in prayer and petition God, God hears our cry. As the Apostle Peter says, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and His ears are open unto their cry. I ask you to join along with us in our service that we have entitled, There is Blessing at the Table. Grace Amen. at the Table. Amen. Table. Mm -hmm. um, it comes from the scripture Titus 3, um, 4 through 5, and 7. And it says, When God our Savior revealed His kindness and love, He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it says, at the Thanksgiving table, the main dish is typically turkey, but at God's table, the main dish is grace. Every part of the blessing is centered around and based upon the grace of God. A simple definition of God's grace is God's unmerited and undeserved favor. Amen. Many people don't believe that they deserve a place at the table, so they don't even show up. But the very definition of grace gives everyone a right and a place at God's table. I was asked to speak on how this related to my life personally, and one of the things that came to mind um, was that I felt I was undeserving of um, upward mobility in my career field. All right. I was. I felt that I was not ready. And I had this idea in my mind of what I wanted to accomplish and the number of years I needed to have um, under my belt and all the, the experience and the, the hands-on that I needed in order to feel that I was worthy of upward mobility. Mm -hmm. um, when I was transitioning to Texas, I was offered a management position, and I turned it down. I said, no, I'm not ready for this. This is not for me. I can't oversee somebody else. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out myself. <laughs> I'm making you know, mistakes myself. And um, I found another position, and I excelled there, moved on to a different company, um, where I am now, and while I'm at that company, um, really excited. It's probably one of the the best the best companies and positions that I've worked for um, in quite some time. And in the midst of just doing what I enjoy to do um, as a uh, professional, my skill set started to grow. My confidence started to build. Um, not only because of, you know, the, the letters I have behind my name or the degrees that I have posted on the wall, but it also has to do with the encouragement that I had around me and the, um, the, the confidence
confidence that they had in me, which helped build mine. Um, and before I even knew it, I was being offered a management position. <laughs> um, and even though there was about a year and a half time difference, it was completely, I had a completely different mindset on it. Um, I took it um, full force. I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel a little bit better about it. <laughs> but a big part of that had to do with um, me letting go and letting God just dictate Amen. how Amen. that was going to happen. Amen. It was about, yeah. um, I was trying to control what, how my path was going to go based on what I thought I was ready for. Um, but God said something different. Amen. And since then, I have been shown unmerited favor um, by God's grace um, at work, um, in my personal life, social life, and all the way around. Um, and I, I can't thank anybody else but him. Um, he's the one that aligned that for me. Mm -hmm. And I use that example um, because, to me, it's, it's very... Um, a true testimony of uh, what God says is for you is for you. Mm -hmm. um, you may delay the path, you may delay the timetable, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thankful that I was put in to those situations to where I couldn't help but to just let go and allow God to um, show up in my life and in my career. Yeah. So um, with that being said, I want to just pray that we all have that kind of mindset to release our um, our control, our, our hold on how we want our lives to pan out and just allow God to move us the way that he needs us to move and place us in those positions um, whether it be um, career, family, um, social, whatever, um, mm -hmm. that he just allows us to be there and let his light shine through us. Yes, amen. Yes. So if you'll go with me in prayer. Amen. Dear God, thank you for all of the things that you have made before us. Thank you for the things that you have allowed us to endure things that we are walking through now and the things that are yet to come. We ask, dear God, that you will just cover us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Empower us with your strength. Comfort us with your love. And fill us with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. We ask, dear God, that you will continue to be that soft voice in our ear. Prick our hearts when we need you. Lord, please allow us to just release all sense of control, release all sense of confinement, any type of barriers or ceilings that we feel that we've placed on our lives, any type of rubrics that we are checking ourselves against, whether it be um, fellow colleagues or those we have friends with socially, because you said that everything that is ours is ours and you are the one who is going to provide it. Dear Lord, we ask that you would just cover us in our paths. Release your unmerited favor, dear Lord. Allow your light to shine so through in our hearts, in our deeds, in our actions, in our thoughts that no one can see but you as we walk this earth to God. I ask that our lives will be a testimony to others, mm -hmm. whether we say it or whether we show it, dear God. I ask the Lord that you would just cover us, bestow your grace and your mercy on us, dear God. <coughs> give, us, give us all that you have. Pour it all. Don't withhold anything, dear Lord. And I ask the God that you would just soften our hearts to receive it. Because that's also part of your plan, dear Lord, is to allow you to guide us, to lead us, dear God. I pray that our, your favor will continue to flow in areas 
and in ways that we would never think of national values. Our plan is so small in comparison to what you have in store. Dear Lord, <clears throat> keep us directed, keep us in mind, keep us bounded to you. Bestow your grace so much that it's stuck on us like white on rice. I ask, dear God, that you would just keep us keen to your decisions and allow them to be our dictators. I pray that as we continue our lives as your disciple, that you will just allow all of the things to fall into place so that your will be done, that your favor is is shown so greatly that others will want to come to you, that others will release their stronghold and their control and allow you to just work in their lives, to allow your will to be unfolded. I thank you for all of the things that you have lined up for us, and I thank you for keeping us in your hands. Dear Lord, I ask that you would just cover us and keep us, dear God. And all these things, in your Son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we continue to sing, our next blessing will be healing at the table. And uh, Reverend Taylor has been assigned that, and we ask that Reverend Taylor would come and lead us. And our next blessing at the table. The scripture he had given me was from Isaiah 53rd chapter. Yes. And the fifth verse. Yes. When he reads it, you will know it. <laughs> but he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Yes. The pastor wrote, you serve Thanksgiving meal at home. You are expecting and desiring all your invitations Get, invited guests to be partakers of everything yes. you are prepared. In fact, some might consider, you know, it in the light to pass it on. Wow. One more dish. But then I, I got up this morning and the Lord put in my heart, my spirit. If I'm yours, I need to understand why I'm yours. Yeah. So I did a little searching. And in my searching, listen what I, what, I, what I found out. Listen what he told me. He said, why should an innocent man such as Jesus Christ die such a terrible death on the cross? Yes. These verses explain why. He, 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 he takes the place of a sinner yes, he does. and he buries that judgment yes, he for them. Yes, yes, he does. Now what am I saying? Well, let's see. One, it says he was wounded. Mm -hmm. That means that he was pierced. Mm -hmm. yes. Referring to his death mm -hmm. on the cross. So, so he walked in 2000, I mean 2020, and you go into life and all kind of things are happening. You in school and people, the children don't like you. You at work and people don't like you. You go to store and people don't consider you. So you get frustrated. It wounds your spirit because you, you woke up with joy and you think that you're just going to school. You think that you're just going to work. You think you're going to, to the store.
storm and everybody ought to have joy. But he says he was wounded and pierced. So you're going to have some things happen to you in life that try to deter you, try to take your joy. You ought to have the joy of God because it is written he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And look at the second. My second thing, my, my, my second object is talking about bruised, which means crushed. People are always trying to put you down. And so it bruises your spirit. It makes you feel like you are not a part. But can I tell you, when you are a part of God's family, you learn to stand alone because the joy of the Lord is my strength. It didn't say I didn't have to go through some things. I told you, on this journey you shall have some trials and tribulations. But be of good courage because he has overcome. And the only way that you going to overcome is you're going to have to have your hand in a wine with you. In other words, you're going to have to know God for yourself. I don't care what winds come, what contrary winds blow. you got to be rooted in the word of God to understand that you're going to have bruises. You're going to be People are going to try to crush you and tell you what you cannot do. But God is going to afford you than against you. There is no failure in God. I can stand here and I can tell you a lot of things. But I'm telling you what the word of God is saying in Scripture. Third, chastise and punish. As though he was a broke, had broke the law. God had done no wrong. You ain't did nothing to people to despise you or put you down. But can I tell you that when you are a child of God, don't you know the devil can see you before you can see the devil? But the good thing is that a child of God is rooted. And grounded in love. Oh, yeah. I used to have a little saying, you don't like a me, me don't like a you. But I had to learn. Love my enemies. Pray for those that despitefully misuse me. I'm on a journey. I'm going home to see my Lord and Savior. I can tell you one thing, and I'm about to sit down, because I only had 10 minutes. I didn't sink. And God has healed me. Amen. My eye been knocked out. My nose been cut off. My back been broke. I got some bullets in my spine. Tell me God ain't good. Amen. Had cancer three times. Tell me God ain't good. Yes. There's a healing in God's blood. Yes. But you have to be rooted in his word. Yes. Oh, yeah. When your foot is placed on solid rock. Thank you. 
for your healing, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Master. Thank you for him, Master. Yes. He was bruised and, and, he, and he was his transgressions and he was wounded, Father. But Father, we understand, Jesus. That Jesus, I understand day, day by day. I must need to go through some area, meaning I must need to suffer some things sometimes. I understand more and more, Father, that this is a suffering cross, Father. And those that follow you must have a mind to overcome any obstacles. Because we own our way home, Master. I can hear you say, Damn, I'll blow your heart. I'm on my way home, Lord.
The Hebrew word for peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. Yes. It refers to a life that's good and satisfying in every way. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of peace we all want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the kind that we can have if we'll pay attention to God and obey his word. His word. Yeah. The blessing book. It's called the Blessing Book. Yes, yes, and that yes. Blessing Book is the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. If we were to tap into a wonderful life, we'll need to open the book and read it. We'll need to open the book and obey it. We'll need to open the book and find the treasures that he has hidden in for us. We have to find the treasures by reading God's book. Now, don't allow Satan to take away your pleasures, your blessings from God mm -hmm. by distracting you and causing anxiety or ulcers, worries that we create upon ourselves and our health so that we will not obtain the peace that we need. He cares for us. Yes, he does. God cares for us. Mm -hmm. And he desires that we walk in his goodness if we would only believe his word. Amen. Amen. So take peace from God's table. Yes. And walk in it. And know that you can have peace. Mm -hmm. It's given to you. It's yes, a it gift. That's right. It's given to you to walk and to endure in it. There are a few scriptures that I uh, meditated upon, um, and one of them is uh, from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, when God shared with uh, Moses mm -hmm. to share with the people of Israel. Exodus 20 and 24. Uh-huh. Our brothers, Christian brothers and sisters, our Jewish inheritance, they uh, exemplify the table of blessings every year before the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. And they're required, uh, according to the Israelites, they were asked to come before the Lord three times a year. Uh -huh. And they had their feasts before the Lord. But they had to also bring an offering before God. That's right. A peace offering. And you, and this, today we're speaking of peace. Yes. So I'm at the table. Mm -hmm. God requires, in Exodus 20, verse 24, it says, He said, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. God requires us to bring this altar before him. Yes. And we shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings. He told them to bring sheep and oxen. Uh -huh. before him and sacrifice them. He said, where I will record, this is the place, the place, the table of blessings. Yeah. This is the place that I'll record your name, my name, where I record my name and I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. He promises to bless us. Okay, there's another one in Mark. Well, there's one I found for sure in, um, in Isaiah, and he tells us about our daughters. Uh, it reads in Judah, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 26, I'm going to read 1 through 4. It tells, in that day, shall this song be sung into the land. We shall bring praises and songs before God as well. We're gonna, we have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace perfect. whose mind is stayed on thee. Yeah. Because he trusts in thee. Yeah. So God promises to keep us and that he will be with us if we keep our minds stayed on thee. Mm -hmm. There are other 
others in the Bible, once again, that's treasure you can find. This is the blessing, the blessing book. As my testimony today, going through this season, of course, my family, I'm from a sibling of eight, and uh, of course, we love the Lord, we love the preacher's word, minister his word wherever we go. And I had a sister to call, to text me this week. And she reminded me of one of the days of feast that we were in. And she began to uh, ask for forgiveness and repent of all the things that she had done. And she wanted to know, was her slate clean with me? So therefore, she wanted to make sure that God was, she was in the position to be blessed. And I began to recall and think back, and I text her back by saying, well, you know, when we were young, you know, there were several things that you could have did to me, you know. But I didn't name them That's right. one by one. No. Because as siblings, we learn to love, and we learn to argue with one another, and then return back to love again. This is what our parents taught us. And uh, I began to tell her, no, I don't think anything is on my list. And I said, and even if it was, I've already gone to the king to tell him that he may forgive you and I of the alt that we may have had with one another. And bring into mind, there's a scripture that tells us, if we have an alt with our brothers or sisters, it don't have to just be family, but it can be someone that you know, someone you met in crossways of passing. Bring, if you have any alt with them, God requires that we bring an offering to the Lord. And if we still have that issue in our hearts, leave your offering at the altar, go to your secret closet, <laughs> go to your that person, if you possibly can, yeah. and confess yeah. and repent yeah. to yeah. one another yeah. that there, there may be peace within yeah. your soul right. and peace within your household, yes. knowing that you have cleared the slate, clean the slate. So in sharing that with you, I sent her her message back, and then I thought about it. I said, well, uh, is there anything I've done to you? Right. You know? And so she returned back to me and said, no, all is well. We, we ended up with a relationship knowing that we are clean before the Lord. Because I desire God to bless me in this season as well as she has. So my prayer today is that we would, if God brings it upon your heart, don't be bold. Don't be so brodacious that you can't turn around and say, please forgive me for the act. Recall the act that you've done that uh, it may be clean and off your slate. So let's go in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being the uh, God of peace, the God of, of long-suffering, the God of joy, the God of truth. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that in you we find peace, and peace that surpasses all of our understanding. Yes. We don't know why that she you know, that, that we continue to harbor things within our minds and in our bodies, Lord God, that create illness upon our own selves, Lord God. But we come before you this morning asking you to forgive us of our sin. Please, sir. And that you, O oh Heavenly Father, will wash and wash away those sins before us, O oh Heavenly Father, that we remember them no more. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord God, thank you. that you're a God of consolation. Amen. Not only are you a God of consolation, Lord God, but you will come and you would abode with us and let us know that we're your own. Yes. And we thank you, Lord God, that in you there is peace. Yes, it is. Peace, oh Heavenly Father, that will provide every issue, anxiety, worry, every uneasiness that we have about ourselves and about our family, yes. about our homes, Lord God, about anything that concerns us. Lord, we, you said in your word that you would perfect those things that concern us. So, God, we come before you today. Lord, there may be someone, oh, Heavenly Father, who uh, was, is tense, Lord God, because they're worried about their children. 
Children walk in the streets at night. Children walk in the floor at night. Children, oh Heavenly Father, that are not obeying the will of their parents or the voice of their parents, Lord God. We come asking, oh Heavenly Father, that you would grant them the peace that they need, oh Heavenly Father, even at this very moment of God. Realizing, oh Heavenly Father, that as we place them in your hands, Lord God, uh -huh. we know that they're in better care than we can even yeah. worry about, yes. Lord God. Yes. So God, we give our children to you, Lord God. Asking, oh Heavenly Father, that you continue to shape and mold them, oh God, in the manner that they should go. And then those, oh God, that may come across their paths, such as their teachers, Lord God, and those, oh God, who care for the children and know, realizing, oh God, that children are our future, Lord God, yes. that they will create a sense of awareness and an environment that will mold and shape their minds, Lord God, to walk the way that they should go, to honor elders, oh God, while they're in their presence, Lord God, to obey their parents, oh Heavenly Father, and to realize, oh God, that one day they will grow up to be parents and adults as well. Yes. And Lord God, that whatever they sow, Lord God, help them to realize that they surely will reap. Yes. It's in your word, Lord God, that they will reap whatever they do unto others, Lord God. So help them be aware, oh God, and conscious enough that they can walk according to your ways. For you said that you would grant us peace. As we bring our prayers and our offerings before you, you said that you would bless us, Lord. You have our names recorded, and you will teach us how to walk in that blessed place. Now, Master, we ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you'll bring peace in our hospital, on the hospital beds, Lord God. For so many are crying out to you, groaning and pain Lord God. But, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you would send forth your angels of consolation to them, that they may have a healing, Lord God, upon their bodies, in their minds, Lord God, of giving them a rest place, Lord God, that they can find peace in your name, Lord God. We thank you for peace in our homes, Lord God, upon our husbands and our wives, Lord. Lord, many have been confined to their homes, and they are looking at each other as if they've never known one another. We pray, oh God, that you would allow your love and your understanding, your peace would grow and to gravitate to one another that they may show unity in the household, Lord God. We ask, oh God, that you would just bless their finances, Lord. Many of us, oh Heavenly Father, are lacking in our finances. We ask, oh God, that you would just continue to allow your provisions to be given, Lord God. And we're thankful for them, Lord God. We ask, oh God, that you would just grant, oh God, each and every cries and request, oh God, that has been placed, oh God, and even in our midst, Lord God, you know the cries of your people. Mm -hmm. And we ask, oh God, that you would just grant it even now. But you promise, oh God, in your word, that if your people, if we're called by your name, Definitely. that you would, that if we would just humble ourselves, mm -hmm. seek your face, yeah. turn from our wicked ah. ways, Lord God. Oh, yeah. You promise that you will hear from, yeah. from heaven and that you will forgive us of our sins yes, yes, yes. and heal the slain. Mm -hmm. Heal our land, Lord God, Lord. and grant peace upon the land. God, we declare and decree today that peace is given to this household. Peace is given to our households, Lord God, throughout the land, under the sound of my voice. It's in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Pray, and his precious blood that he shed on the cross for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 I feel like praise and praise again. I feel like praise and praise
the blue. Abundance at the table. Abundance at the table. Abundance at the table. Psalms 35 and 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in his servants. Let the Lord be magnified. The first three words are powerful words because it says, let the Lord, four words, be magnified in five words. God, let God be magnified. Hallelujah. We're talking about abundance, what? At the table. But yet the summit says, let the Lord be what? Magnified. When I read those few words, I realized that what the summit is saying is that as God brings abundance in your life and in my life, God is being magnified. Because it's God who will bring what? The abundance. And as you and I go before God in prayer, Crying out unto the Lord who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. When God blesses, he is the one who is receiving Amen. the glory. Amen. So there is abundance at God's table. There is an abundance of love. There is abundance of peace. There is abundance of joy. There is abundance of mercy. Abundance of everything you and I need in life. This abundance is not just money. People, when they think about you talking about abundance, the first thing that comes to their minds is money. Yeah, yeah. But let me say something to you. As a child of God, many of us would refer the peace of God, the power of God over the money that God is able to give. That's right. Because when I realized what Solomon asked God for was not money. God, Solomon asked God to give him an understanding of how to lead his people, but then God says, I will give you that in which you asked for and that in which you have not asked for. All right. So when we come before the table of the Lord asking God for his abundance, we ought to ask for those things that are spiritual and God will bless us with that which is needed. God knows what we need. But what God wants us to do is ask for those things that is more needful for the spirit man. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Because we are blessed that we may be what? A blessing to, someone. to somebody else. There is abundance at God's table. One of the problems that I see as a pastor, as, as a person, is that many of us are not asking for what we really need in faith, believing that what we ask him for, he will grant it unto us. Yeah. Everything you and I need is available at the table. And the table represents when you fall on your knees before Almighty God. And you cry out to God and say, God, Lord, you know that I'm facing this obstacle in my life today. Well, Father, you know that when I get on my job, I'm facing many who don't like me. I'm facing bosses who are critical, bosses who are hateful, bosses who are unsaved, and co-workers who don't care for me. Lord, I know you know what I'm facing, but Father, prepare my heart for what I need today. And so when we begin to pray for that, God will grant you what you need. Yeah. And even that in which you don't even ask That's for. Right. That's because right. there is abundance at the table. Yes, sir. Yes, when, sir. when I'm driving 
or to my job yes, uh, uh, on most days, and I'm almost say almost every day, I say, Lord, prepare my heart for what I am yet to my face. Lord, Lord. That's a wise man. That's a wise man. For what I am yeah, yet to face. Lord. See, because you and I don't always know what we are about to face, but God right. knows. That's right. That's right. And what I'm saying, Lord, you there, there is abundance of grace and mercy yeah. at your table. Yeah. And, and Lord, I need my substance for today. That's right. That's right. That when I reach my destination, well, my heart is already prepared for what right. the that's enemy right. is already set up against. That's right. But because of God's grace and his blessing uh -huh. at the table, well, he prepares my heart mm -hmm. for what yet is to yeah. perform me. There is a the scripture we often say that God, mm -hmm. he, he, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above mm -hmm. all that we can think of yet even ask. Yeah. But yeah. yet there is a uh, word that says God keeps us from danger seen. Right and unseen. And unseen. Yeah. Yeah. There is abundance yeah. at God's table. Mm -hmm. and, and I can honestly say to you and say to you all that there have been many times in my life and in my wife's life and as a family life that God has shown his abundant mercy mm -hmm. unto us. Mm -hmm. God has shown his abundant grace unto yeah. us. Yeah. I never asked for this pastoral ship position here. There was a dear lady that was a part of a mission group that I worked with at Holman Street Baptist Church. And each mission group was assigned a minister to go and to preach. Yeah. And uh, we would go to homes and we would go to convalescent places. And the preacher would bring the message. The minister would bring the message. Right. And I was assigned to one of the mission groups. And um, I would go, when we would go on Mondays, and, and this young lady was a part of that mission group along with me. And it just so happened her family uh, was the leaders of this church. Her uncle had passed away, and, and she knew that they needed a pastor and was searching for a pastor, and she recommended my name. I, I knew nothing about this church. Uh, we're talking about, again, the grace of God. Yeah. We, we're talking about the healing of God. Yeah. We, we, we're talking about the peace of God. And we're talking about the abundance of God. God, uh, when you look at the grace, God's grace enabled me to find be found having favor in a my young Lord. lady my that brought my name up. Amen. God's grace is, is abundant unto us and sometimes unaware yeah, yeah. to us. And so the young lady put my name in. I came, I presented, I preached several times and, and it is what it is. I've been here all of these years. God is an awesome God. And God shows forth his blessings in our lives yeah. in so many different ways. Uh, when I look at it, it says his abundance uh, is, uh, is at the table. Mm -hmm. When I look, when you think about abundance, abundance is, is a word that, that is magnified. In, in other words, it's, it's great. It's awesome. It, it, it is whatever you need it to be for whoever is in need. It's abundant. Yeah. It's more than what you need. It's more than what you think you need. In other words, some have said he's more than a one, enough. He's sufficient yeah. in what he blesses us with. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know what you need today. But God has an abundant uh, mercy, abundant grace, uh, abundant peace, abundant in his healing, abundance in his love. Whatever you need, we serve an abundant God. Mm -hmm. His blessings are abundant. Amen. He will never run out. Never. Hallelujah. He is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Yeah. His abundance is available to you and I. Mom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your blessings are abundant. Yes, Lord. That you are able, Lord God, to, to meet us where we are and, and to bless us according to our need. Yes, Lord. We thank you, dear Father, that 
the blessing that you have for us is abundant to, to, to meet our need, even as it is abundant enough to meet somebody else's need. Yeah. We thank you that you are a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think of yet even ask. Your, your abundant mercy, your abundant grace, your abundant peace, oh God, is able, Lord God, to, to, to meet every need. And we thank you right now, Lord God. We give you praise right now, Lord God, for your abundant mercy that is upon each of our lives this day. Thank you for your abundant forgiveness, your abundant grace and mercy. Thank you for your abundant love, oh God, that in that you love us more than we could ever love ourselves. We thank you for your abundant love that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and, and for the sins of the world. But bright and early Sunday morning, Father, your abundant mercy, he got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up and your abundant mercy upon our lives, we too shall get up. Thank you for your abundance. Oh God. And we give you praise and glory. But God, not only do we thank you for your abundance, but Lord, we thank you for the many that will be touched in this place because of your abundance. For Lord, you have saved us. But now, Lord, we call on you right now to touch somebody's life today. We call on you right now, Lord, to prick somebody's heart today. Let that abundant grace, Father God, call someone that has heard, oh God, and that has witnessed what has taken place today of your peace at the table, your grace at the table, your healing at the table, your abundance at the table to meet whatever need we may have. We pray that right now somebody's heart has been pricked, Lord God, that somebody may give their heart to you today, Lord. Realizing that whatever they need can be found in you. Realizing that you love us so much that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus, to die on a cross that we might have life and have life more abundantly. That you are able, Lord, to open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings, Lord. Oh, God, touch someone in the name of Jesus right now. We pray, Father, that someone may be restored, that yes. someone, oh God, may re uh, surrender their heart to you, that they may realize today, Lord, that they've been walking out of your wheel, walking out of your, your, your covenant, Lord, and that they may reunite back with you in fellowship, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh God, have your way, Lord. For we thank you for this hour. Lord, we petition you right now for the many prayer requests that have been placed upon this table. For the many, oh God, that are crying out to you right now. Father, extend your peace right now. Extend your mercy right now. Extend your healing right now. Extend your joy right now, Lord. Extend, Lord God, your grace right now, Lord. Hear the cries, Lord God, of these your people, Lord God. May they have confidence and assurance of knowing that you hear their cries because you have said in your word, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and your ears are open unto their cry. May they have confidence this day, Lord, to know and understand that you love them. Yeah. That you are concerned about us, Lord. We thank you, Master, yes, for your word that no weapon formed against us thank shall you. prosper. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you were, you were wounded for our transgressions. Yes, we thank you, Lord God, that the chastisement of your peace was upon your shoulders. We yes. thank you right now that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank we you, thank you right now that you give us a, give us a peace that passeth all understanding. Yes. Oh God, bless right now. Man. Hear the cries. Answer, Lord Jesus. Move, Father God, by your Spirit. 
Have your way, Lord God. And Father, we come right now standing against uh, that spirit of doubt. We come against the spirit of fear. Because you did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Break down the barriers that have hindered you from answering our prayer. Break down the of God that has been set that have hindered your people, Lord God, from receiving the abundance that you have made available. Help us to walk in our blessed place. Lord, we give you the praise this morning. Thank you, Father, for Sister Simone. Thank you for uh, Reverend Taylor. Thank you for Sister Althea. Thank you for those that are watching and participating, Lord. I pray that your blessings will overcome them and overtake them, oh God, and meet every need and tear down every wall and, and build up strength and peace and love and joy and long-suffering. Build up that inner man in the spirit, Lord. How we give you praise and glory in this place. We lift up our president, O oh God, and his wife, and the many, O oh God, who are suffering right now for cause of sicknesses, O oh Lord, in their bodies. Because it is what you called us to do. That we pray ye one for another. So we lift them before you, Lord, praying your peace, praying your power, praying your healing upon their bodies. For there are many around this world that are going through sickness. But Father, we know that your word declares that we are healed by your stripes. Thank you for your word that is found in the book of Isaiah. That you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities upon your shoulders. The chastisement of your peace was upon us. We thank you, Father. Thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. May your will be done. Bless every church that is opened, oh God, on today. As they are beginning to reopen, yes, we pray that you will put a guard upon us. Keep a hedge about us. That we may be able to come together and to worship and to pray your holy name without fear, without reservation but give you glory and honor yes, Lord. in the yes, names we thank you and we give praise amen and amen and amen God bless each of you pray that uh, this service has been a blessing to you on today as we realize that it is somewhat different but yet it is something that we are able to do because it all honors God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Uh, sometimes we have to move out of the box yeah. and do things a little different. But if God receives the glory, Hallelujah. all is well. Hallelujah. Well, my brothers and sisters, I pray that uh, you have been blessed uh, in the service uh, today where we have went before the Lord and petitioned his face for his blessings. I know that in some way or another, God has ministered to your heart on today. And I pray that you continue to fall before the face of God in prayer by faith. Trusting and believing, knowing, according to the word of God, that whatever we petition him for, that he is faithful and just, and that his love for you and I is that we might be blessed. So have a wonderful day. Trust God and believe God every step of your life. Be blessed in the Lord. This is our plan.